Melissa, what's the best or most memorable magic play you ever made? So I'm at a PTQ in 2008. It's Lorwyn Block Constructed, and I'm playing against a pretty good player. It's like the top four. I'm playing fairies, blue-black fairies. The opponent is playing five-color control. So this is the deck that had vivid lands and reflecting pools and played spells such as Cloud Thresher, Volcanic Fallout, Cruel Ultimatum. Okay, so think about all the mana costs there and the lands that we had access to. That was the deck. At some point in the game, my opponent played a Volcanic Fallout, putting himself to 18 life. We played a really long game where we had a lot of back and forth of resources. He used a lot of Cloud Threshers to like wipe all the fairies off the board. And I drew a card called Puppeteer Click. And um, this is a card that when you cast it, you get to steal a creature out of the opponent's graveyard. So I cast this Puppeteer Click and take the opponent's Cloud Thresher out of his graveyard dealing two damage to all flyers and all players, which kills the Puppeteer Click. The Puppeteer Click has Persist, so it comes back into play. I steal the other Cloud Thresher from the graveyard, dealing two damage to all players and all creatures with flying. So my opponent is now at 14, and the uh, Cloud Threshers are 7-7s. Seven so I swing at him, and that is 14 damage. So I go on to win that match and then win the PTQ. All right, Exaxes. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it was not only was it Exaxes; it was with one magic card, and my opponent needed a very specific graveyard to do it. Next question: What is the worst <laughs> magic play you ever made, and maybe what did you learn from it? The worst play is not that interesting, but the learning was like pretty interesting. So this was at the uh, Pro Tour that I top aided, which was Pro Tour Gate Crash 2013, and I was like deep into day two or something, and um, I was playing against Yol Larson. He was playing a Jeskai, Jeskai Charms, like Boros Reckoner and like Azorius Charm. And I think the goal was to deal damage to the Boros Reckoner to like kill the opponent or something. It was like a mid-range deck. He had a Cavern of Souls in play. It was naming some relevant creature type, but I forgot about it. So he cast a creature with the Cavern of Souls. I countered it with a Dissipate and it's he said, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he, he said, okay. And he didn't put the creature in the graveyard. And I looked at the board and saw the Cavern of Souls and was like, okay. So I put the Dissipate into my graveyard and just like did not get flustered and did not let it affect me and just continued to play the game like it, like it didn't happen. Like it was just a very normal thing. Like play this card, Dissipate, okay, we move on. I just mostly learned um, to just like not let mistakes get to me and just recover quickly and mm -hmm. just continue to play. And I I went on to win. I don't remember if I, if I won that game, but I did win the match. I might have won that game too, but I don't remember. Another interesting thing that happened in that match was, and, and that play, was Dave Humphreys, who at the time he was like the recruiter for R&D. Um, and he was looking for players to uh, like interview to like work at Wizards. And he watched the whole thing. So he watched me put the dissipate into the graveyard and like go on my merry way, you know. And uh, in my mind, it was like pretty embarrassing, but I'm pretty sure that like the the whole like keep my composure and not let it affect me and just keep playing did like attribute to like him reaching out and wanting to interview me at some point. So not sure how true that is, but like that is a thing that happened and could be true. What's your biggest level up moment as a Magic player? There was a time where um, I was like a pretty okay Magic player, but definitely not a great Magic player. And I wanted to start playing Magic Online just because I, I know that people who play Magic Online are good Magic players and like it helps them level up their game. So I decided to give it a try and um, I was able to get into one of the uh, high Magic Online clans on Magic Online. Um, I just had an in, like I had a friend who said he'd get me in and playtesting with those players was like so valuable and I learned so much from just playing games with them. Like we would... We would join the dailies together and like chat in the, the chat feature about it. And we would also just like play games against each other, you know. And um, that was a pretty big level up moment for me. And uh, that uh, during that time that I was doing all that playtesting, that was leading up to Pro Tour Valencia 2007, which was my first Pro Tour that I made money in. So have to say that like th that must have helped, right? Which Magic player had the biggest influence on you and why? The player who had the biggest influence 
on me was Raphael Levy. How did we get testing together is just kind of weird because like I didn't go up to him and ask him or anything. Like the person who I was dating at the time wanted to just know all the magic players. He just started talking to him. And um, one GP, he needed a room and we had extra space. So he stayed in our room for the GP and we just like talked and became friends. We had a lot in common. So at that point, um, when I qualified for my next pro tour um, and I needed somebody to test with, he was like, yeah, you can test with us. Let's go. Um, so we tested together for that pro tour and it happened to be the one that I made top eight of, uh, which was gate crash 2013 and lots of level up moments, like during that whole week of like play testing with like players who were just a lot better than me, including multiple hall of fame players, you know? And, um, over the next like two years, uh, we play tested every, uh, pro tour together, learned a lot from him. His approach to the game is just, he approaches the game like magic has variants and you are not going to win all of your games and you just have to understand that variance happens. And like, that was something that I took to heart, something that I learned from him. And um, I think it helped me a lot to just realize that like, you know, sometimes you have a low percent chance to win this match, but it's still a, a chance, you know, you can play to your outs, you know? So yeah, that's the answer. What's your favorite magic related travel story? Uh, my first pro tour was, um, Pro Tour Venice 2003. It was my first time going overseas, my first time I had to ever get a passport. I didn't really know anything about traveling or anything. Two unrelated stories that I want to tell. One is just funny and one is like kind of the real answer to your, to your question. So I'm an American. I've never been to Italy before. I don't know anything. So we get there and I just really want a coffee. And I'm used to gigantic Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. <laughs> yeah. That's That's... That's what I've been drinking, you know, I, I'm like in my early 20s or something. Mm. So I'm like, okay, go to a coffee shop. I order a large coffee in Italian, which is, I don't remember what the words are, but you know, cafe or whatever. I get the most tiny coffee I have ever seen. It's like this big. And I was like, how is this a large? I don't understand. Did I say it wrong? And then I like just find out that like coffee in Italy is just like very small shots of espresso, which I didn't know that before. I had never really had an espresso like that, like Starbucks was like not really a widespread thing at the time, you know? I'm just used to like the gigantic, you know, you say Dunkin large donuts. ice coffee, you just get this 32 ounce coffee, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was a funny experience, but we've come a long way since then. And then same trip, um, a bunch of players had a very early flight the next day at like 6 a.m. And for international travel, you have to get to the airport like two hours early. So we're like, we don't need a hotel. Let's just go to the airport at, you know, 3.30, 4 a.m. or whatever, because, you know, we're young and don't need sleep. In Venice, the airport... So Venice is, like, on an island, or it is an island, and it's just very hard to get around, and they use boats for a lot of the travel, like water taxis and stuff. So you had to take a water taxi or a water bus to get to the airport, and they were not running at the time we wanted to go, so we just had to go the night before. So we just, we just had to go at, like, 11 p.m. or something. So we just had a ton of time to kill at the airport and everything was closed. So we just like kind of picked a place that had tables and just did a bunch of drafts all night. And it was really fun. And there were cards everywhere. And there were these Italian security guards, like what the hell is going on? Like the airport was just completely empty except for like, you know, 12 magic players. And that was a really fun first pro tour experience. Just like drafting all night and just leaving a mess all over some closed Italian coffee shop at the airport. <laughs> 